Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'm State Senator Carla Nelson. I live in Rochester. I represent Rochester, Chatfield, Dover, Yova, over Dover, Dover, Iota, Stewartville, and 14 townships uh, in Olmstead County. And uh, I'm uh, very thrilled uh, to have you all here today. I'm also the chairwoman of the Education, Finance, and Policy Committee. Today we're going to talk about legislation that I've introduced to bring more early learning scholarships to low-income Minnesota children. Joining me today are Senator Franson, if you could just wave so people see you, Senator Franson, uh, Senator Anderson, uh, Allegra, Maria de la Cruz Mendez, Rob Johnson, Sarah Stebbins, and Diane Halsey. And you'll hear from each of them uh, shortly. Uh, these are all supporters, and there are many other supporters in the room as well. And we are glad to have each one of you supporting this important initiative for our youngest learners. You know, I've been working on this since 2011. Imagine, think about that, it's been almost a decade. And as chair of the committee that is laser focused on closing achievement gaps and innovation, I am more convinced than ever that early learning scholarships need to be, they must be, a top priority. Now there's three main reasons to support scholarships. If you remember anything, remember these three top reasons. First, scholarships demand quality. Now if Art Rolnick were here, unfortunately he's out of state today, but you know he would be the first one to remind us that if we are going to have a high return on investment, we must invest in quality programs that are using kindergarten readiness best practices. And in fact, we know that investing in low quality programs can actually hold children back. So scholarships demand quality. Second, scholarships are flexible and they are parent driven. Parents with scholarships are empowered to select from a variety of quality options based in homes, centers, churches, schools, and nonprofits. Uh, and rather than forcing parents into a one size fits all approach, scholarships empower parents to choose a program that best fits their child's needs, their location, their schedule. So for interest, inter for, for example, if a parent were working full time, they might want a certain program that offered more full time options. Scholarships are flexible and parent driven. And finally, scholarships target, target limited funding to low income Minnesota children whose families could not otherwise access quality programs on their own. Low income children are most likely to fall into our achievement gaps. And so this must be our top priority. As you know, uh, our state uh, has a persistent achievement gap, one of the worst in the nation. And we can no longer afford to let that happen. So scholarships are income targeted, and that is not true of other learning programs. The other thing you might notice is that we have strong bipartisan support. You know, talk is cheap, and we've talked a lot about bipartisan and working on these issues that matter most to Minnesotans. Well, that's what we're doing right here. It's another reason to prioritize scholarships. Unlike other proposals, scholarships have been supported by leaders on both sides of the aisle. On the Republican side, they've been championed by leaders like me, Senator Icorn, Senator Anderson, who you'll hear from later, Representative Creshaw, House Minority Leader Doubt, among many others. And on the DFL side, targeted scholarships have been championed by Senator Franson, who you'll hear from later, Senator Torres Ray, House Majority Leader Winkler, Representative Pinto, and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan, among many others. And as you'll note today, scholarships have been supported by a very diverse group, such as the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, the Minnesota Business Partnership, a Minnesota without poverty, and people serving people. Very broad, diverse groups 
have all come together and realized that targeted scholarships are a top priority. And it's not often that you see such broad support that we have on scholarships. And you know, I would be remiss if I didn't miss mention that it was Senator Dwayne Benson who first brought this scholarship idea to the Capitol and was a champion and a leader from the beginning. And so it's not often we see this much support. Uh, there is scholarships are the middle ground. That's where we can work together to do something special for Minnesota's most vulnerable children this session. I'd like to introduce Senator Franson. Thank you, and thank you all for being here. Senator Melissa Franson, I represent Senate District 49, which includes Edina, West Bloomington, Eden Prairie, Minnetonka, and I want to thank our chief author and the Senate, Senator Carla Nelson. Um, other people that have been really involved in this effort as well in my time here um, has also been um, Senator Weger and Senator Cohen. I first heard about scholarships when I was running for office in 2012, not 2011, but still early enough when this movement was moving forward. And um, I also have to acknowledge the work of, that has been done by a, a constituent of mine who happened happens to be the, the executive um, of Ecolab here in St. Paul, and he um, and many other companies have also um, put a lot of effort and time to moving this effort forward and making it truly bipartisan. We all care about our children and our workforce of the future. I'm glad we have a little one here because that's why we're here. We're here for those who, who can't speak for themselves and they have us as adults to do so. Um, when I heard from the scholarships, I also um, happened to be at a breakfast for Joyce Preschool, and the speaker there at that day was Art Ronick, and he was talking about scholarships at that point, too. Uh, now, fast forward to today, I have a two- and a three-year-old, and my three-year-old is in Joyce Preschool, and there's a mother from here um, who's going to speak later, um, and my son happens to be um, her um, classmate, um, her, her, her son's classmate, Mateo, so, and my son, Philip. So um, we were just talking about exchanging values Valentine's cards just yesterday. So um, it's just a, a pleasure to, to see stories like Joyce and see stories of so many other places that are benefiting um, from having these scholarships available for families who really need it to make sure that they we, we close the achievement gap, that we certainly help um, the workforce of tomorrow early. And it starts there because the return on investment, as Art has already um, eloquently um, talked about over and over for almost 10 years now, um, how do we keep moving this in this direction and make sure that everybody has access to good quality early childhood education across our state. Thank you, and I hope that we can continue to bring support and have this happen this legislative session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Paul Anderson, representing Plymouth, Minnetonka, and Woodland. Um, I'm also uh, privileged to have Art Rolnick as one of my constituents and a uh, tremendous uh, mentor. So we've got a, a, a uh, three in a row here to mention uh, Mr. Rolnick. Uh, improving access to early learning scholarships and providing cho choices so parents can find the best programs for their kids is critically important to the success of the state of Minnesota. We can't fail to recognize also that it's also about economic development, something that we may not even uh, think about when it comes to early childhood development. Early learning scholarships make an extraordinary difference in the outcomes for the child, for the society, and for the economy. These important scholarships help low-income kids be ready for kindergarten, be um, less likely to need special education, be proficient in reading by third grade, which is critical, more likely to complete high school, and be college or career ready, and, and so much more. So we as a state do so many things well, and it was touched on already, but for far too long we have been abysmal in the achievement gap. Uh, this is just something that we just have not been able to figure out. We do so many things well. This is an area that we just have to address. We need to do all we can to set our low-income kids up for a successful, successful career, a uh, successful education path, but a successful life as well. As a co-author of this bill, I look forward to continuing to work in a bipartisan, common-sense way. You've seen that already this morning uh, with my colleagues to support early learning scholarships. Thanks. Thank you. And I think Maria. Is now you'll hear from the experts, parents. Yeah. Maria. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's my first time in the Capitol speaking in public, so I hope you enjoy me. <laughs> um, my name is um, Maria. My son's name is Mateo. He is three years old. 
He is in the three and four years class. I am. I live in South Minneapolis. I use the scholarship. I use the scholarship to go to Joyce Preschool. Um, and we really enjoy the school preschool, the Joyce Preschool, because um, my Mateo is the younger in my is the youngest. And I have uh, another son. He's eight, already 18. He was in Joyce Preschool before. It was the experience in Joyce Preschool. It was amazing. It changed his life because um, um, he uh, always enjoyed going to school every day. And the way I have seen my son, Mateo, change it, um, I have seen him develop skills like speaking, knowing his feelings, understanding why it's important to have different moments of listening, playing, and using words to communicate himself. And I'm really thankful that Mama Mateo is with other kids, like, um, like Philip. I did not know, I did not have any idea how that was um, a good idea to have my Mateo and Joyce preschool. And if I did not have the scholarship, my life will be different because I could not pay the cost of full-time day. My Mateo used to go just two days at the beginning of the school. I did the struggle at the beginning, but I asked for help with Joyce preschool, and I said, how can my Mateo come? A full time in class, and they offer me the scholarship, and I apply, and I'm so thankful that I approve. Why? Because my Mateo, I can see him smile every day, wake up in the morning, and say, "Mommy, it's time to go to school," and I say, "Yes, my dear." <laughs> so, it takes me like 40 minutes to have him ready, but it's worth it because he plays with friends, he learns, he hits four, and then he already knows the colors in two languages. Because Joyce Preschool, it's, um, they teach them in English and Spanish. And then for me to hear my son saying the ABC in English and then Spanish and the numbers, and then speaking, he's already speaking in English. And I'm so impressed, and I'm so thankful the scholarships got offered to me. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Allegra Kennedy, and I'm honored to be here in front of all of you today. Um, I've been a NAS family for over eight years. Um, in 2011, I received scholarships for my, my then toddlers. Um, and since receiving those scholarships, I have four older school age scholars who are now on honor rolls, been on the honor roll since kindergarten. I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm. I have three younger um, scholars who are still um, infants, and they're excited about learning as well and expanding their growth mindset. I just am um, thankful for the program, and if, um, if NAS had not brought this to my attention, I would have never known about the Think Small early childhood learning skills and the scholarships that I was receiving. With that, I have a better hope for my children's future. Um, I always say, the younger they learn, the better they learn. So I thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, now we have a uh, parent, Allison Petrie and Colin, who I want to make sure the cameras are able to see. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Colin is the reason that we are here, young man. So here you go. <laughs> okay? This is what it's all about right here. Many Collins throughout Minnesota. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison. My husband and I live in Plymouth, actually in Senator Anderson's district, and we are the proud parents of three boys, ages 11, 10, and Colin, who is four and a half. <laughs> have to say the half or I'll get called out. <laughs> Prior to having children, I was a middle school math teacher, but when I had the older boys, I found that I was going to spend more on childcare than I would make teaching, so I stayed home with them. 
Then they went back to school and I went back to work. When we had our third son, Colin, my income was still needed for family expenses, but the cost of a quality education-based childcare would eat up most of my pay, and it made it very hard to justify working. At the same time, my husband, a United States Marine Corps veteran, needed to take time away from work to seek care for his service-connected PTSD. This made our family financial situation feel impossible. So when we received an early learning scholarship for Colin, it was a critical lifeline for our family. With the scholarship, I'm able to bring him to a New Horizon Academy that has a four-star parent-aware rating. There I know he is learning from proven curriculum and being cared for by wonderful people, setting him up for success in kindergarten and beyond. Each day when I pick up Colin, I ask him what he learned that day and I love his responses. Whether they are 16 words that begin with the letter Y, or the worldly wisdom of, if you're playing the drums, don't drum too hard or you'll hit yourself in the face with a drumstick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that happened this week. <laughs> As a former math teacher, I appreciate that he recognizes numbers and he loves to count, sort, and also identify which brother has the most or the least of candy, chores, dance moves, anything. Colin is very proud of the work he completes and I get to see evidence of it every day. Uh, recently, his biggest achievement is learning to write his name. I find it on all his work, including this where it's written in the middle of snow. As the mother of three boys, I really enjoy writing your name in the snow like this. <laughs> Some of you know. <laughs> uh, the scholarship program makes a real difference because it allows him to learn and grow and it allows me to contribute to our family financially and be a member of the workforce. Thank you so much for listening and for supporting Minnesota families by supporting early learning scholarships. All right. Oh, you gotta show them your shoes. Oh, can you, your shows, shoes do something. What do your shoes do? I said, I think he's the only one in the building with shoes that do that. We all want them. Yes. Thank you, Colin. So, um, and now I'd like to have uh, some of our scholarship supporters that you might know from other roles join us. Rob Johnson is the former Cargill senior exec, close, cap, close gaps by five, and think small board member. He knows a lot about why these scholarships are so important. He's been a pioneer. Rob. Uh, thank you, Senator Nelson. Um, I can't add much to the stories that you've heard from uh, these families, but what I can do is take advantage of being the oldest person in the room <laughs> and tell you a little bit of history uh, of the Early Learning Initiative. I was fortunate enough to be one of the founding members of the Minnesota Early Learning Foundation in 2005 and had the good fortune um, of hiring Dwayne Benson as our first executive director. Um, MELF was a collection of uh, CEOs and other community leaders who wanted to answer the question, what can we do to eliminate Minnesota's worst in the nation achievement gap? We decided to take a very deliberate approach. Um, we raised $20 million in private funding. Um, we reviewed all of the available research. We decided to pilot programs in a variety of different settings from the urban core to rural settings, including an Indian reservation. Uh, and we hired an independent third party to evaluate um, our pilots and to tell us what worked and what didn't. What they told us was that scholarships, when paired with the Parent Aware Quality Rating System, definitely made a difference. Low income kids in Parent Aware rated programs made significant progress across all of the kindergarten readiness indicators like early literacy, early math, as well as important social and emotional skills. So, fast forward 13 years. Um, we now have this bill being introduced to expand the funding of scholarships uh, that are tied to high quality uh, early learning experiences. I think there are many reasons why we should be supporting this. Um, Senator Nelson mentioned several of them. I'm going to highlight uh, four that are important to me. Um, first, 
scholarships do target the most vulnerable kids in our population and help them uh, compete on an equal footing with their more well-off peers. Second, they tie um, early learning to high quality. And all of the research says that it's only high quality early learning experiences that can make a difference. Third, they offer daycare providers incentives to adopt kindergarten readiness best practices and to become high quality providers. And finally, it's an affordable approach. It's something we can do here in Minnesota and frankly, something that we cannot not do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then we have uh, Sarah Stebbins, Early Learning Scholarship Coordinator for Families First, Minnesota. Thank you. Um, as Senator Nelson mentioned, my name is Sarah Stebbins. I'm the coordinator of the Early Learning Scholarships for Families First out of Rochester. Um, we serve 28 of Minnesota's counties um, with scholarships. And I just wanted to share a little bit about the funding and um, our wait list um, struggles here in Minnesota with the scholarships. Um, as the administrators of the scholarships, we work with families and we work with programs. Um, every single day we work with community agencies, community groups, and trying to get the word out for scholarships, their availability, trying to increase the parent aware providers to keep more children in those programs and not so many children awarded a scholarship that can't find a program to spend their funds at. Um, I think we do a good job at Families First trying to keep those children in a center or in a program, school readiness, Head Start, family child care to spend out those funds. Um, but it is a full-time task at trying to stay in touch with those families and keep them enrolled, keep their options open and share that information. Um, along with that, we also have to monitor their spending um, so that we can best spend our funds in a most practical way. Um, with the limited funds that we have, trying to serve the most children that we can um, still creates a very large wait list in our area. Um, so one of the main purposes um, of my position every single day is to review those funds. We review what children are spending and what we can free up for more children to be awarded. Um, it seems like we barely make a dent and more mail comes in. Every single day we process those applications um, and send out those waitlist letters for families. Um, we hear the stories, just as some parents have shared here, about families that um, are able to improve their learning or their living situation because of a scholarship help covering the cost of the child care, which sometimes is a stressor for families. Um, probably not sometimes, a lot of times. Um, we've had families that share um, their stories with us that are using credit cards or they're using student loan funds instead of attending college um, to pay for care while they're on that very lengthy waiting list waiting for a scholarship. Um, this to us becomes um, not only an issue for those families, but more of an economic issue for our community as well, because some of these families are having to withdraw from the workforce because of the fact that they're not able to obtain that scholarship at the time. Um, our growing wait list and continued conversation with families um, and the outreach areas just improves the program, which is fantastic, but it also improves those um, ever popular wait list numbers. Um, at this point, we um, continue to work with those families and layering um, options for them to cover the cost so that they can spread out that scholarship and use it to the best of their abilities. You can use your scholarship with child care assistance funding, um, co-pays that you're paying out of pocket on top of that. Um, but a lot of times these families um, are having to use up those scholarships in a very short amount of time. Other times they're not um, using the full scholarship amount. Um, with those 28 counties that I serve, I have a lot of rural Minnesota, um, and those families aren't coming close to the full 7,500, which is fantastic. That allows us to use more funds to serve more children. Um, when you get closer to some of those metro counties that we serve, those children are only able to attend a program um, for four or five months at a time, possibly. Um, so we are hearing from those families how fantastic the scholarship is, but we're also hearing the frustration at the limited funding that's available right now. And unfortunately, that wait list, which is our favorite word around our office. Um, as Senator Nelson and everybody else has mentioned, the scholarships are a program of family choice, um, which we hear is um, really what families are wanting is that option of choice because you are able to customize what works for those families. Um, a lot of times, um, full-time care is what they need off um, 
off hours in the evenings is what they need. If they use Head Start during the day, they can use a scholarship in the evenings um, for the wraparound care. So um, provider, providers work with the families, families work with the scholarships. I think the family choice is really key to the scholarship program, um, but the scholarship um, coverage continues to um, prove that our children are better prepared for kindergarten and we'd just like that to continue. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And um, last we have Diane Halsey, Senior Vice President for Family Engagement at Think Small. Diane. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Um, I, again, I am Diane Halsey, Senior Vice President of Family Engagement at Think Small, and I oversee the scholarship administration at Think Small for Hennepin and Ramsey County. Uh, Think Small has been administering scholarships um, since the pilot that Rob mentioned uh, about 10 years ago. And currently we work with many providers and nonprofits, school districts, and Head Start to do outreach to parents to get them to apply for funding. And we've heard many stories like we've even heard today about how this funding has changed the trajectory of families' lives, giving parents choices to send their child, children to high quality care as opposed to, in some cases, kind of piecemealing together care for their children. That's the best part of our job, being able to give a scholarship to a family um, that's being able to access high quality care. And we love doing that. However, the hardest part of our job is turning people away. And right now, there are hundreds of children waiting to receive a scholarship that we cannot give to them because we have run out of funds for this year. So today I'm here because I really want to urge the legislature to provide more funds for the Early Learning Scholarship Program because there are so many more children, low-income children, that are in need of this high-quality care. And this benefits all of us because children prepared for kindergarten, as has been stated, do much better in school uh, when they get to kindergarten and then later on in, in life, um, they're just better prepared for school. And here in Minnesota, if we are going to be successful as a community, as a state, we have to do something about our horrendous achievement gap. And this, the scholarship program, is one way to begin to close this gap by giving access to high quality care to those families that don't have another, any other way to afford it. In just a few years, our communities and our societies will be depending on these children to run our schools and our governments and our businesses. And so this benefits us all by giving them a good start. So again, I just want to urge the legislature to um, add additional funds so that we can cover all the children that are in need. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to just uh, thank all of you for coming. Is there anyone else who wants to add something? Well, I, I thank you for your attention. Uh, you can watch as this bill uh, proceeds. I believe it's uh, Senate file 1306. So thank you very much. I'll, there, if there's a few questions, we'll be glad to take those. I see none. I see you're all supporters. Thank you. <laughs> Call your senators, your House members, the governor, uh, and encourage them to support targeted, flexible, parent empowering scholarships that prepare our students to be successful in kindergarten. Uh, your state will thank you, as will our business leaders. Thank you so much.